So we have Gautam back with us here today. Such a pleasure to have you here. My pleasure to be back in Riyadh again. It's great because I interviewed you last year. Yes. And today I'm back here interviewing you again. Uh -huh. But in the last 12 months, the amount of development that has taken place mm -hmm. on the cybersecurity front is mm -hmm. just massive. Um, um, yes. What That's do you right. have to say about that? No, I think for a short span of one year, the growth uh, and the evolution has been exponential, really. There are a lot of newer concepts that have come in. There's a lot of re-engineering of existing technologies that we're looking at. And I think the focus has been around convergence of siloed and disparate solutions mm -hmm. that organizations have been adopting all this while for uh, their cybersecurity needs. But there is a need for them to come together on a common platform, which has to be a future-ready, frictionless approach towards security. The likes of the leading analysts have also been talking in terms of identity-centric security, mm -hmm. that organizations need to do away with the silos of them because there's a friction in actually bringing the integration in. If you look at the kind of human skill sets that are required in managing each of those technologies, it calls for multiple teams. True. And at the end of it, when you have such different solutions, uh, you don't have a single view window into who has access to what True. and where, True. and what is all this investment actually returning as value to the organization. Yeah. The answer lies in convergence of all of this such that it's a native platform that can seamlessly integrate all the technologies. Uh, in terms of identity, it could mean an MFA, an SSO, uh, any kind of a PAM, IAM, or an IGA solution coming into play an enterprise world for that matter, mm -hmm. but all being delivered through a common platform yeah. and, and microservice done. So I think well those, are, those are some of the areas that we've seen grow and come into focus in the last one yeah, year. So well said. I think that's a clear picture of it all. And today, in terms of our stance um, with uh, cybersecurity, AI, and the different developments that are sure. taking place, there's no real black and white. We're still testing the waters. Yes. Uh, we're talking about how great this is in terms of scope, efficiency, and output. Absolutely. But at the same time, um, uh, they're talking about authenticity, um, uh, transparency, and then this output does have a professional mask, but is it that accurate and is it that safe? Yes. Um, where's the balance point? No, I think as far as accuracy is concerned, automation is evolving to be more and more accurate because the kind of big data that lies behind it is now sufficient enough for them to pattern recognize mm -hmm. and deliver upon its promise of that. Sure. But I'd like to get on to a, a little more important point on in terms of automation here is that we created the automation. We humans have created that, right? So we do not want the automation to take control over mm -hmm. human beings mm -hmm. at the end of it. There's a, there's a definite positive side to the automation, but we need to be mindful mm -hmm. and take control over the negatives as well. We've yeah. all seen sci-fi movies and, you know, true, hell true. could break loose if that, and that, that could theoretically happen as well. So even at Archon, our thought process is that there are human identities, there are digital or non-human identities, and there are digital assets, right? This is the world of the automation and the digital identities and the digital assets need to be mapped back onto a human identity. True. So a human identity, a human being needs to be in custodianship of that mm -hmm. so that the control remains mm -hmm. accordingly. And that's in the DNA of when we develop solutions, that's the core in our DNA as well. As one of the speakers said, um, even though it's functioning perfect, I mean, on a fast pace, but we have to not forget that we have to lead the technology, not yes. be followed by absolutely, it. Absolutely. You said something very interesting that now most business models due to new, the new development are more outcome driven. Yes. Um, we're looking at uh, speed of output. We're looking at efficiency. We're looking at productivity at a multiplied level. Absolutely. Um, what positive outcome uh, can we uh, anticipate to take place in the near future because of this? Well, uh, outcome has many perspectives here. And of course, it is around delivering the expected business outcome of uh, what an organization has invested in certain mm -hmm. solutions for. But I think in the larger construct, it's also around the experience of it all, right? True. Outcome is very deeply entrenched with experience, user experience. Why, for example, is Tesla a three, uh, you know, a trillion dollar uh, car manufacturer today? I don't think it's because of the design of their cars specifically or that they're battery operated uh, in that regard. There are many that do that, but 
it's really about the level of engagement that they have True. with the user. It applies to all realms of life. And when we talk about outcome as our fund, we're really talking about the level of engagement, mm -hmm. the level of experience that the end user would be having True. that needs to come out mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the actual deliveries that, that are happening, right? Uh, it is expected business outcome, it is hyper-personalization, it is ownership versus access control, but at the end of it, the experience is what matters. True, true. So well said. Yeah. We hope to see you here next year, just like I interviewed you last year. I hope to see you here next I'd year. Be, I'd be and thrilled to be back here. Bigger developments, hopefully. For sure. Thank you for Thank everything, you. Gotham. What I love the interview. My pleasure.